um, this was a dream that I had maybe like February or March. And, okay. um, oh, I also wanted to let you know that I, you, you told me right down on my dreams and I have not been doing it, but there's a few that have like stuck in my brain. And the other um, day I was like, I've got to write these down. And as I started writing one down, just like that, I, I knew what it was saying. And it was actually about what's happening in my life. And so I'd had the dream before all this started, but you know, now that it's playing out or whatever, I'm like, that's, that's what this is about. So that was just awesome that in writing it down, the interpretation came. That's so, amazing. Wow. So um, this one is not coming to me. So I need your help. Um, okay. I called it the big hill. Um, so in my dream, I was going to the home of this like, prophet or teacher that I follow on YouTube. I don't really know who it was, but it was somebody that I'm, you know, following on YouTube. Um, and there were three or four other women that were there as well. The home was way out. All you could see around it was just open land. You didn't see other houses or anything. Um, we were led through a side entrance into the house and it was um, like these concrete hallways that were narrow even the floor was concrete, um, but it was a short passageway and it brought us up to some stairs and we went up those few steps and we were in the gorgeous home and it was like huge. The um, foyer is where we were, but it's kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like the Beverly Hillbillies, you know, how it's big and open and kind of round, you know, the rooms came off from each side um, for multiple, you know, multiple sites, like a circle. And, um, um let's see we um we got to go in and meet the teacher um in the dream I never did really see her or hear her talk to us um I didn't know any of the other women that were with me but um I got the impression that some of them were not believers and even um two of the ladies seemed like they may have been a couple um and I did have an interaction with one of the non-believers and I felt as if she was belittling me because of my excitement to, to meet this teacher that I looked up to. Um, and then when we were headed out of the house, we were all excited. We were chatting about the things that she had shared with us and the things that were going to be happening soon based on what she had said. We walked down a long driveway to get to our cars. All the other women drove off in their cars, but suddenly I was riding a bicycle to get home. Mm. Um, the, the bike ride was long. There weren't any stores, any houses, you know, I was just on the road by myself. Um, and then I came to this place that I stopped and I got off the bike because up ahead of me, it was just a two lane road and it was going down a hill and then up a steep, steep hill. And like I say, it was just, um, two lanes and you know not a lot of um land on the sides it just dropped off on the sides and it was trees on both sides and all i could see was the tops of the trees so you know wasn't that they were coming up past me they were down lower than me as well mm. and um i got on the phone on my cell phone and i called my mom to tell her about this hill i was facing and um while I was telling her about it, and apparently that was her house I was going to go to to tell about my experience. And when I um, was telling her about it, all of a sudden the um, the road turned to sand. <laughs> and, you know, I knew it was going to be impossible to ride my bike. So I knew I was just going to have to try to walk up that long, high hill that was sand now. And then I woke up. Wow. All right. Neil looks like he's got something. No, it's just, um, uh, there, there's just some anomalies throughout the, the whole dream here. You know, you, yeah. you go in, you're, you're with three or four women who you don't know. Um, you're going to visit somebody you, you really like, or you think you follow on YouTube and you think you really like them. It, it's a woman teacher, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's women being taught by women and that's cool. 
Um, so three or four women out way out in the country. You know, so it's this, this place of teaching that's her private home that she's, you know, a place like that, she's going to share herself with you. And you're kind of excited about that because it's kind of nice when people impart what they're doing in their in their life and in their in their work with with you personally. So this woman has some sort of desire to teach you, even though you don't see her teach or hear her teach. Right. Right. So but, you know, somehow that she has taught you by the time you leave. Yeah. Okay, so you enter in the side entrance, which is kind of unusual. Most guests will arrive through the front entrance. And when you come in there, it's it's not very welcoming. <clears throat> you know, it's a concrete, narrow path, and you wind your way through there. It's it's almost like it's the servants' quarters. Yes. Entrance, yeah. What you might feel like. It's like, well, you're not being really honored as a guest mm -hmm. the way you should be because you're you're a guest in her house, but you're being treated as something less than what you're really worthy of. But when you get up the steps, you climb the steps uh, up into the foyer, you come out and this is really opulent, really gorgeous, um, marble floored, you know, Beverly Hillbillies, <laughs> yep. crude kind, of, uh, kind of a place. All you're waiting for is, uh, you know, Jethro and grandma to come out. So you meet the teacher. Um, but you don't know the other ladies in, in the in the place, so you're you're in a place where <clears throat> it's new to you in in so many ways. The, the teachers you you just met a, the house that you're in is brand new to you, and the people that you're with really don't think very much of you. You know the the one lady tries is belittling belittling you for your exuberance and your excitement about what the teacher is going to do and what she can how she can help you. Um, Two of the ladies you said were a couple, you thought? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit odd. So the whole setting is a little bit odd. How you got there is a little bit odd. Once you're there, it's kind of odd, and you're not treated very well either. And so on your way out, you know, you're done with your training. You're done with whatever this lady has imparted on you. You know what it is, even though you don't recall it from the dream. Um, <clears throat> and you're chatting on the way down, but they're, I can't remember what they s said about you on the way down. Was it, there was just, you were just excited about talking? Yeah, everybody was kind of excited about what we just learned and what that meant was coming in the future. So you're all, you, you eventually all kind of got to talking to each other. Mm -hmm. So there was a friendship that developed between the time they first initially saw you and the time you were walking to your vehicles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, there was a change in attitude in some of them, at least towards you. Yeah. But when you get to the, the parking lot, everybody takes off in their cars and you're on a bicycle. Like not the greatest vehicle of destiny. Um, said before, you know, a bicycle is two cycles. There's two wheels. So there's two cycles to it. Um, and you're going along, long, long ride on this, this vehicle. It takes a lot of effort, a lot more effort than a car. So the, the, what you've gotten stuck on is a, is a vehicle to destiny that's a little bit more difficult. It's an upgrade from walking, got to admit that. But we're going to find out later that you degrade to walking. So you come to a stop because up ahead, there's a, a really steep downhill, which for a bicycle is really good. But then on the other side of that ravine is a really steep uphill climb. There's something, there's, there's a time that's coming for you that's going to be really easy <clears throat> to go down, like the, the, the hill, the downhill part. But there's going to get to a point on the other side where it's going to be a little more difficult. So it's kind of a, hey, get prepared. This is not going to be so easy for you. Um, and it's a very narrow path. If you look to the left and the right, it's a sheer drop off. As a matter of fact, it's so high that you're, you can only see the tops of the trees. So you're above the tree line, which means you're really high up. Um, and so you call your mom. Did you call your mom to tell her about what you just learned or to get a ride home? Uh, just to tell her about this road that was ahead of me, like, you know, it was it was scary to me because, you know, the 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 steep drop off on each side, and just like, how am I going to ride my bike up this steep hill? Yeah. It's going to be mom impossible. Always has, mom always has the answers. Yes. <laughs> I think mom represents God in this case. You know, when you when you pray, that's what you're asking. It's like God help me. How am I going to get through this thing? But mom always knows. So I mean, that that's a symbol that makes sense in in, the, in a dream. Because you trust her. I mean, she's the one who's always had the answers growing up, and she's going to tell you what to do now, and God's going to tell you what to do. Um, 
and then the road turns to sand. Yeah. Not a good sign. Um, just because it's, it's difficult, you know, walking in sand is hard enough, but riding a bicycle on sand, is probably even harder. And you found that out because you had to eventually stop the bicycle, get off and walk up the hill. So there's gonna, it, it's kind of, it's like the Israelites wandering the desert, you know, that was a hard slog for 40 years. Um, I'm not saying this is going to be impossible. You're going to get up it. You know, this is this is a this is a obstacle that you're going to face, and you're going to you're going to conquer it because you walk all the way up it. And that's it's it's more of a um, be looking for this because it's not going to be easy, but be encouraged you're going to get through it. Okay. What'd you hear, John? Well, you know the the reason you went to this place was because the speaker who you admire was there, right? Right. So I feel like there's the whole idea of putting somebody up on a pedestal, um, particularly if you've ever had faith in a speaker and then you hear them kind of go off the deep end or you hear that they've had some weird stuff happen in their life. And now everybody's calling them a false prophet or this or that. Or, and, then, and then you just you just kind of feel awkward and somewhat betrayed for the trust that you put in that person. And I feel like there's it's almost like a series of unfortunate events. There's all this kind of stuff from you not being honored to, you know, to women couples to all just all kinds of weirdness that's happening in the house, which I believe God may be showing you what could be happening in a house, either that invites her in or whoever this person is and, or it could be her house. But at the end, when you finally get ready to leave, um, you have the feeling that you're, left behind because people get in their cars and drive away and you're on a bike and that you're on an unsteady foundation. In other words, going to see this person puts you in a house of a whole bunch of weird things that you're discerning that, wow, there's this going on. There's that. I'm not really feeling honored. I thought there'd be more of this and then blah, blah, blah. And then you're left without the tools that you need to move forward. You don't get a car, you get a bike. And then you're trudging along a path that's not even made for a bike. It sets you on a path that isn't good with what you've been provided for. So I feel like if you could go back to the beginning and not go to the house where this teacher is, you avoid all of this. And so it could be a warning, but it's a warning with specificity of everything to there could be some some weird stuff related to the couples to there could be they have a problem with giving grace and honor which could be you know they have a problem mentoring people because if you're mentoring somebody then not only are you bringing them along and giving them tools installing your mantle giving them impartation but you're also giving them a voice and connections and i, I really haven't seen a lot of people unfortunately do that well and so a lot of people want to surround themselves with a crowd of people that they consistently teach to. But who do they ever share their platform with? Whoever comes on and prophesies with them or teaches with them or, you know, we're so used to in the Christian world, what they call the man of power for the hour, you know, where we've been to a church and that old school pastor teaches breakfast, lunch, and dinner, like every Wednesday, every Sunday, both services all the time. Like he's got to be flat in bed or in the hospital for him not to teach or somehow out of town somewhere. And so that's not mentorship. It's not discipleship. They didn't make a place for you. You didn't feel honored. You weren't given the tools to carry your destiny and your calling forward. And you were set on an unsteady path. And so there's just four things that I feel like um, happened, plus other stuff that happened in the house um, that that's, you know, just kind of there's each part of this is specific. And if you think about it, you know, the Holy Spirit gives you revelation. I don't need to unpack all of it for you. But, you know, there's obviously some other things that are happening here that just could be like, you know what? Um, maybe you should really take a look at either do some background or some research or. <laughs> Just be really focused on pressing into the Lord instead of, and I'm not saying that you are, um, but it's almost easy in the Christian world to, again, this isn't a reflection on you, but almost to become like a Christian groupie, like so many people love like Kim Clement or, oh my gosh, and all he's coming, or, 
you know, any, any number of people, they just absolutely love. They watch everything they do on YouTube. They try to go to any event they can, and then something happens and then they leave the church and they want to quit God. And it's like, was your trust in that person or was your trust in the Lord? There's certainly things you can learn from somebody in their gifting, but being firmly planted in the house of the Lord, that's the house you're going to. That's the person that you're seeking. That's the one that will provide you your identity, your tools for destiny. He's the one that will put you on a steady path, you know, on a path that doesn't sink, that isn't sinking sand, or you don't feel like you're trudging through mud and like there's all this weirdness and you're trying to discern. And that's like what the Lord does, you know, and, and, Thy word, right, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So it's that whole thing. And so balance anything you're hearing, I'm not saying these speakers or, or leaders are inherently bad because they're definitely not. I'm just, there's a lot happening in the body of Christ right now. There's a lot of names that a lot of us know that marriages are falling apart, that stuff is being exposed, that things are coming out, that people that people have looked up to for decades were just really bad news. And, and if, if they're in that position, if they're in the house, because the person's there, woe to them, because they're on a really unsteady foundation and it's hard to move forward from that place. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. That's you that, so you don't have to be in that, in that place at all. He's letting you know in advance mm. that this doesn't have to happen with you. Mm-hmm. So. Do you have a church that you're going to now, Mary Susan? Yes, I do. Are you are you contemplating leaving there and going to a sub, someplace else? Um, no, but um, kind of this new path that I was, you know, mentioning in the beginning, like I I potentially see a ministry, you know, with a certain person, and and they're not, um, you know, they're not a big name YouTube person or whatever, but I don't know. I just, um, I really do, uh, bear witness with seeking the Lord, you know, getting, making sure that that is where I'm getting my source from. And, um, you know, so that I, I, that I have that strong foundation and I know the path I'm going is where he's leading me, not these little trails that maybe I might, watching somebody might follow and get myself into some sand. So I, I appreciate that very much. I, I felt like this was an important one for me to understand and I sure wasn't getting anything out of it. Yeah. So, but I, I do, I do feel like listening to you both, like it is a warning. I can avoid having to go down that path if mm-hmm. I'm, solid with the Lord and, and not listening to everybody else's counsel mm-hmm. for my, for my well, life, for my journey. So. Don't follow the guru. Right. Yeah. yeah.